Okay, so I want to talk a little bit today about programming with the GM uh, MDI2. Uh, this is a generic uh, Chinese clone one. It works fine. Uh, you can program modules with this all day long. It works great. Uh, there's a couple gotchas, okay, um, and they're minor things. One is uh, this doesn't have a spot on the back for the batteries, right? And so the real one, you can put batteries in it that will act as a backup. This does not have that. This does not have the built-in wireless. It's got, uh, let me show you here. It's got the uh, little emblem on it, but it doesn't actually have it. So um, it's just got a USB hookup. And so it does have an ethernet. I've never tried to use that. Um, but I always use the USB one. And it works fine so uh, this will uh, when you go into the software every once in a while you will get an update for your GM MDI manager and that will come with a new version of software for this guy and it, it this will flash the firmware on it and an update just perfectly fine even though it's not a genuine one and so uh, it does seem to work just fine uh, now since it doesn't have batteries when I'm programming, I always make sure that I have a backup battery source and an AC adapter plugged into it. It does have a spot for an AC adapter here and one of these, yeah, right here. And you can just plug this in. Anything 7 from 32 volts to DC will power it up just fine. And um, that makes sure that it's not just powered off the ODE2 port there's power to this module as well in case there's a little glitch on the OBD2 or something during programming you're going to want that the other thing is when you're programming is to uh, make sure that you uh, plug uh, the AC adapter for this guy into a power inverter in, in another car and run an extension cord over um, and the reason I do that is if there's a power outage in the middle of programming then I would be solely dependent upon the power from my ODBD2, which I don't want to be. Um, so, I mean, that's really the gotchas on this guy, but it'll program modules just fine. It, it, it works just fine. And so, um, it comes with a USB cable and the OBD2 cable. I'll leave a link down below where I got this. They're not a sponsor. I don't get anything for it, but it's the one I got, and it works really well. So now we're going to go into some of the software and how you have to kind of set this up. One more important thing to note is that if you're using a, a cheap clone module or an unsupported JBox um, and you run into problems programming, GM is not going to help you. They're going to say, I'm sorry, that's not a real module that you're using. Go have a nice day, right? The 800 people with 800 number aren't going to talk to you and help you through a problem, even if it's not related to this. I've run into zero problems programming GM modules, but it is always possible. However, if you done brick the module, it doesn't matter if you're using real hardware or not. They're not sending you a new module, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. Um, but generally, I don't think you're going to have any problems with this. Um, the other thing is when you're programming uh, on a car, always use a battery maintainer. I have a 60 amp battery maintainer. I probably should have like a 100 amp one but the 60 amps done fine on all the GM and Ford stuff I've programmed and um, it's uh, you know it should be fine and you don't need to use the battery maintainer when you're just going in there uh, using your JBox with like tech to win to to look at that kind of stuff only when you're actually flashing modules you want to make sure 
that that battery voltage stays exactly where it's supposed to be. I will put a link below to the uh, battery maintainer that I use. Uh, but it is capable of putting out an exact voltage at 60 amps constantly. So, um, but let's go on to the software. So, um, you'll see that I have um, basically Internet Explorer, all right? And I am already signed in, uh, but I will sign out so that I can show you how this works. So you come here, and this website is acdelcotds.com. And this is kind of some of the magic that I'm showing you here that I just didn't know at first. Like, like nobody ever explained it to me this way. Like, you know, like you see people like Eric go going through and programming stuff. And I, I don't understand like uh, how he got in there and what he's doing. You know, so this is kind of a a noob's guide to how this works. Okay. Um, so what you'll do is uh, you'll create an account. And you can just go down here to you don't have an account. I like to make an account, sign up, put in your email address, all your information, and boom, you'll make an account. And you'll log into your account. I think they send you an email, have you verify it, and boom, you're, you can log in. So I'm going to go ahead and log in, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so the first time that you log in, they're going to make you uh, scroll. Well, actually, every time you log in, they make you scroll to the bottom of this. They have read and agree to everything and hit agree and continue and then you're all logged in and so what you'll want to do is go to the resources tab here and you'll want to do uh, system requirements and this is going to tell you what you need to have for a programming PC and uh, if we look at this it's just going to it's going to go into a whole bunch of bull about enterprise grade hardware and non-enterprise grade just hardware and who cares so you're going to need enterprise grade hardware not really you're going to need some Wi-Fi that's fast all right you're going to need an Intel i3 i5 i7 processors it says sixth generation and above this is a fifth generation i5 and it does just fine you're going to need Windows 10 professional 64 bit and you are going to need Windows 10 professional 64 bit um, you're going to need the Java runtime 32 bit. Okay, make sure that it doesn't have like a, a x64 after it. It's just the 32 bit version of Java runtime environment. You'll have to download that and install it. bit, and you can just find that by going to Google or Bing or whatever this is and type in 32 bit Java. Oh. and you'll see right here um, Java runtime environment 32-bit download oh that's not the right place so yeah we don't want to go there let's try this first one that's actually Java's site that other one was file horse or something and so you'll uh, you'll see version 8 um, if you do a Java download you want to make sure that yours does not say x64 after it um, and so this says just Java setup 8U261 if it says x64 here it would be the wrong one so that's the right one so make sure you have the 32 bit Java um, and there's some other requirements on here like you should have a 3 year on site warranty like, nobody cares about that so the two important things there have a PC that's fast. Have a PC that has 8 gigs of RAM, although I've done it on one with four. Um, this has 8 in it now. Um, and make sure your Java runtime environment is 32-bit, and make sure you're doing all your programming from IE11. So just generally make sure your PC software, your updates are all loaded, everything's good to go, and all that kind of stuff, okay? Um, so again IE11 Windows 10 all the updates loaded on it 
and um, you know try to keep the laptop as clean and pristine as possible you know you don't want to do this on your general web browsing everyday laptop you want to have a laptop dedicated just for this kind of stuff or like I have a Windows 7 drive that has Ford and other GM software on it this is a Windows 10 drive so I have multiple hard drives that I swap in and out of my laptop so that's always an option too alright so uh, now that we're logged in uh, we're going to come down here and uh, you can see that I've already bought the subscription um, and you're going to have to buy at least one subscription for $40 in order to do the rest of this software setup so you're going to come down here and you're going to click this view right over here and then it's going to come up here and you know some stuff you can say add VIN and so this is going to bring you to your TDS screen I already had one screen open so it's saying do you want to terminate that yes now it opens up my next screen this brings you to the TIS to web is what this is called TIS to web which is your technical information system or something but TIS to web has the SPS on it which is the service programming system which is what you're going to need in order to program with so you're going to click the SPS link there and it's going to bring you to this and um, you're going to click start SPS the first time you run this it's going to come up with a bunch of different screens it's going to come up with some updates that you have to install um, it's going to load a new firmware for your module um, and so I'm going to tell you a couple of things one is uh, one of the things that we'll try to install is the J2534 wrapper and it won't install it it'll say installation has failed and you can't program without it in order to get that to work you have to right click on your Internet Explorer here and hit run as administrator um, and so the other thing is going to be um, you're going to have to once it updates the MDI from whatever version the Chinese people had on your box to the new version you'll have to open this GM MDI manager that it installs you'll see this will be here and it'll have an update button right and you'll have to hit update on it right now I don't have it plugged in so it says it's not connected but you don't have to leave that open in the background or anything and um, but then you'll you know so we'll click start SPS and it's still going to come up and ask me if I want to allow it to continue or whatever and it'll do this every time even if you say do not show it again it'll show it again but you have to let that run and this is where you would see all these things installing and updates and stuff the first time you go through this or if there are new versions or updates you'll see them but then you'll come to this screen and you're going to say I'm going to use a J2534 tool and we're going to reprogram an ECU Replace and reprogram is if you're uh, replacing one and already you want to read all the information out of it. But we're just going to do reprogram, right? Because we're not even really doing this. But here's going to tell you you plug uh, your module in, ignition off, then you turn the ignition on, you verify your vehicle battery is fully charged, use the battery maintainer, um, turn the ignition on, engine off, connect the J2534 device, and uh, and then to the car to the PC so I don't have a car right now so I'm just going to connect this up to the PC with a USB cable because this does have an Ethernet but I always use the USB cable and we'll plug that in and then we'll plug this and into our USB port on our PC and it finds it and so you don't have to load anything or do anything at this point it will automatically find the JBox and so now we can just come down here and choose any type of car we want to right it's communicating with the box and it comes up and it's like hey I can't find the VIN number. Well, that's because there's no car there. But if it wasn't communicating with the box, it wouldn't it wouldn't come up here. 
it also the first time that you run this come up with a box that shows MDI 1 and MDI 2 on the Chinese clone you need to select MDI 1 <laughs> even though it does say MDI 2 like this one um, but uh, then after that it remembers that it doesn't ask that anymore but this is where it would normally read the VIN and you would confirm it and then you would purchase that VIN number and it would show you all the software updates available for the vehicle you can go through and select the modules that you want to reflash and you can reflash them and it'll talk you through some different processes and stuff here and sometimes some modules will have notes on them that say like if you update this then you'll have to update this this and this or stuff like that but generally this is pretty straightforward from this point forward but I just wanted to make this video to show those of you how this kind of works because I didn't know and it just took a lot of poking around and figuring it all out um, to get it all working and um, you know calling them is not an option when you're using a pirated box so um, that's kind of how you have to do this and you just need to make sure that you got the right versions of everything and um, that's how I program modules um, for GM so if you like this video and you want to see me do a module programming at some point, I'd be happy to do one. I think uh, Eric O and all those guys do plenty of module programs and show how it actually works. But they don't really show you how they get to that spot where they are. And um, this is with the GMMDI, you know, Kardak and, and the Bosch, several other J boxes are supported and they'll have their own MDI managers and stuff. But I think it's important to realize that the, this. Uh, cheap Chinese clone JBox loads the updated firmware and flashes cars and modules just fine. Um, so that's it. I'll talk to y'all later. This is Tom, your frugal prepper.